Hi guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Noodles, the channel where we continue to break down the anime of spring. Spring is nearly over. We are quite quickly approaching the end now. So make sure you are subscribed because I have about half of the preparation for the next video. Spring wrap up video nearly done. So I'm halfway through. I've got most of the stuff now. I'm just sitting on my top three. I just can't decide the top three order. So I've got about five anime. Any of them could really be absolutely amazing. They could take the but they could take first place depending on the season. But I've got to put these these five into the top three somehow. Every day I wake up and go, oh now I, I think it's this. And then the next day it will completely change. So I'm not there yet. But make sure you are subscribed because that will be going your way in about two weeks. We have a few episodes now left of Vivi and we're starting to get answers. We're finally at that corner point where there's answers. We pretty much get most of the answers this week. Gonna be interesting now because we've got the answer. We need to now two episodes left. We need to do something about it. There is a Discord channel for you guys to also join. You get notified whenever videos go up on a channel. This allows you to stay in the loop and also you get to see if anything new is going your way or if there are any delays. I have just finished eating a lot of very hot hot sauce, the top being the scorpion chili pepper. I am an idiot so I didn't realise that I still had to record two videos. Let's just say I'm going to try and get through this without suffering too much. Let's get on to the episode. Before we even get going we need to talk about the title of today's episode the word modulation being used in the title modulation is often used for a change the idea of being able to change pitch most frequently used with sound the idea that songs can modulate a sound can modulate this i think think might have been the initial hint phoebe wrote a song and this song is being sung by every single ai which is now going rogue perhaps the hint in the title that the song is intrinsic Going back to see our timeline, clearly seeing as well on the timeline, there's definitely alternate paths. We can see a few different alternate paths that were not taken. We being the red route, which again, ending up right back at a total wipeout, a war of the AI versus the humans. We didn't really change anything, but there are slight differences. And I initially thought it was 100% failure, and they do say 100% failure. There's some slight differences. They're, they're minor, don't, don't get me wrong, they are minor, but there are differences and we're going to go through that with you guys. And we'll also talk about the multiple twists that happened in this episode as well. But, welcome to hell, Vivi. You can't, you've been sleeping, you've been working on your song for ages. Hello, welcome to hell. This is what you're waking up to. We've gone full circle. We have gone full circle right back to an AI uprising. And it's been a while since we saw the initial first open episode. It all came right back to me when, when, upon seeing the sequences of the humans getting brutally massacred in varying ways by toasters and all the AIs. However, it does seem that the AI are acting quite autonomous in a word. I want to say the word autonomous. They seem to be on autopilot. Vivi tries to actually talk to one of them and she doesn't get a response. So everybody seems to be just hacked by response. The idea that the song may have been a virus was my initial thought. Maybe the song turned out maybe weaponized by what we find out later on as well. It's been weaponized to be a virus, and that's what everybody is now capable of doing. So none of these AI have free think free will, free thinking. They're not self-conscious in the way that Vivi is. But we do hear the idea that the the singularity project was 100 percent a failure because war has broken out the exact same day. So nothing has changed. I did initially think that we were speeding through the events, but it seems that we actually didn't. So we may have think felt like a few events happened quicker, so we might have spurred a few things on. But the initial day for the war breaking out is exactly the same. So it kind of feels like nothing really changed, but maybe the trigger this time is different. Just gonna be interesting to wonder if the trigger the first time round was different. I don't know if Vivi wrote a song last time because Vivi wrote her song based on her experiences with the Singularity Project, which seemingly were not was not there for the first time round. The first time that we saw the war break out and Osamamoto, as I'm calling him, then ended up sending data back into the past to Vivi. So the trigger this time seems different. It does feel like a century though since we saw the opening sequence, the initial episode, episode one, that really put Vivi on the map to not being just a simple idle anime. We get a replay of the scene with the professor. However, this time round, I do believe the professor would have died. I believe this time round, because he is actually distracted by the song, he hears the song sing and he stops what he's doing. I believe that he would have actually died if not for Vivi jumping in last minute to save him. 
It is a very beautiful piece that plays at this moment in time when Osamamoto realises that 100 years has already passed by for Vivi. She's already lived through the 100 years. But it's a very beautiful song. The strings bring the feels. It's a bit of a slow build. We go minor gradually into the major. A bit of a modulation there as well. Vivi and the cube end up this time asking for his help. We need your help. You're going to have to help us as well. So we're pairing up. We've got our AI and now we've got our humans pairing up together. A lot of the key words this week is going to be the idea of coexistence. Twist number one. This time around, Toka, the good guys. Ish. They are definitely going to be the allies this week for humanity. But this is what I meant. There were no coincidences. Never, no such thing as a coincidence. And VV really does hammer that home. Nothing did. Nothing happened for just no reason. Everything was happening for a reason. The bloodshed. Lots and lots of bloodshed. Lots of scenes of human bean juice going absolutely everywhere. Can't show it. But the humans once more seemingly at a huge disadvantage. It's also quite scary that right now you're watching me. And I'm recording this also on AI in a sense. I'm recording this on a smartphone. My phone is very smart. But you guys are watching this maybe on your smartphones, maybe on a laptop, on a PC. Right now that you are surrounded by things which could possibly in this in this future turn around and kill you in a very, very horrific graphic way. Not looking forward to being hit by my phone or my phone literally coming to life and trying to electrocute me or something. Took off the bat seem to not trust Vivi because right now she looks like a very bad person because it is indeed her song being sung. I also wondered if they had grudges for all the run-ins of them initially through the past but it does seem like nobody really holds any grudges to that. To be fair, I think it's been a fair bit of time since Vivi was sitting in the AI museum. So a fair bit of time has now officially gone by. Obviously, Toke hasn't run into Vivi in all that time so any newcomers really probably wouldn't recognise her. But it's interesting because all throughout our plot, Toke has been coming to blows with them on more than one occasion. So I can see why initially, if anybody was a bit older, they would see her as a bad guy because she's always seemingly interfering with their plot. Obviously, they don't, the twist for these guys, knowing that these guys are on the same team, Phoebe has been working for Toke unknowingly because Professor is allied with them. So it's unknowingly we've kind of been on the same page, but they just don't realise it. Twist two and three, putting them quickly together. Beth is, in inverted qu quotes, alive. So she didn't survive to crash. And I know it's explained quite nicely as well that she is an AI and her memories, her storage, everything, all of her soul, in a sense, AI soul, was upon a Toke storage device. So it does make sense that she's been brought back. But number three was the big point that I was kind of confused by. She's not infected. And obviously, we get our answer to this a little bit later on. But I was sat there going, why isn't she infected? This is interesting because it, it showed you that not all AI were actually going rogue. And I was starting to try and pinpoint little bits on my own time. Kind of going, wait, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. But I did initially also wonder if it was because she was a relation of Vivi's. But that's out the window. So that, that was a line I was considering, but it's not quite right. Twist number four. Yu Kakatani. Would you believe it or not? He has a granddaughter, which seemingly means he got married and then his... Or he or a brother maybe of his got married and then they then had kids. So it's a bit of a... We, the timeline in my head getting a little bit squiffy, but um, it works. It probably does work. Once more, showing you there are no such thing as coincidences. You now being the leader of Toke. Beth initially looking very, very angry, hearing the name Kakatani coming from Vivi. I was a little suspicious of Beth right at the start because obviously she wasn't supposed to be there, but the way they actually explain it makes sense. I did wonder as well if Beth had been handed down from him. In a sense, yes. You ends up rebooting her and putting her back together finding her a body but she was the life protector of Kakatani initially so making sense that she would then go on to protect a, a relative of his but we find out the biggest twist and this is one of the big twists that show that the singularity project may have failed in bringing about the war it did change something it changed something very important you as a moderate all this time we've seen Toke as the terrorists, we've seen them as an extremist group who have gone about trying to kill people. You is championing coexistence, not the idea of human superiority, which we saw initially Kakatani displaying. So this was our first clue that Toke now has maybe learnt from their past experiences and the fact that the Singularity Project 
has had an effect. It has had a result. Something has come about from the meddling. Beth reveals that she is indeed a clone, but she still has some of Be Beth's original memories. She was initially knocked out, that face-off with Vivi. I like to think that after she was hit by virus cubes, I think he hits her with a vi an antivirus or something. He hits her with something, and then she's reverted back to her original self. I think up until the revert, she can remember all of this. So she doesn't seem to remember the fight. That version of Beth is the version that now sitting in front of us. That's all the memories up until that point. I was worried that she was going to come straight out and try and attack Vivi. But thankfully, it's not the case because I was worried that to her, Vivi was the one interfering in the plans of her master. Vivi is then asked for Kakatani's essential last words as we see her inherent desire to be useful to him still there. However, we as an audience even know that Kakatani's last words about Beth were not too flattering. So it's quite nice to see Vivi trying to skip out of giving them to her. However, let's bring on another twist. We have Kakatani footage. He tries to start the most important sentence that I really wanted the ending to, but he doesn't quite give it. He starts the sentence with the reason for his harsh belief in the fact that an AI should just follow orders, and then he stops. So he actually leaves us hanging, but it does seem like there's a reason. There seems to be a reason why he had such a harsh belief in the first place. But it does seem now that Kakatani has softened up. This footage coming from the same day as the Ophelia mission, maybe his clashes with Vivi, his teacher, all of this. This is the day that he changed. He also tells Elizabeth continue protecting if she ever found a new body. So the fact that he's also addressing her when initially he didn't really see her more as just a tool, it definitely shows a softening and his expression too looking a bit more softer. However, he is in his AI body at this point. 40 years now, Toke has now been playing the semi good guy, more like the good guys. They have been promoting coexistence. So they had a change of heart. And to be fair, anybody can have one of those. But they are now championing the idea of coexistence, which shows us once more that the Singularity Project had some effect. It may not have prevented the big overall goal that was to stop the war but it's had effects along the way which seem very very important which actually might be able to stop the war before too many people die sadly people have died and i don't think we're going to get around that but it's quite nice a few of us were also wondering if we would be jumping back into time doesn't seem like that may be the case and i actually have to applaud the anime for that because too much time skipping is difficult and things get messy and plot lines get messy and we start to ask questions and people get lost along the way the fact that we're not doing it i think i have to applaud it seems we're gonna try and wrap it up now where we are we're gonna not go back we're not meddling anymore we're gonna deal with the war and try and figure things out because it seems next week we're going straight to the archive itself so perhaps the singularity project did have an effect Perhaps all that interfering from Vivi, even though they were typically trying to fight for the same thing, actually ended up turning him into a moderate group, actually softening an idea that actually we could probably coexist with you guys. That's probably what we should be fighting for, which does also seem to be the ending on most AI franchises. So Detroit become human. If you actually select the correct options and you have the correct ending through Marcus's demonstration of peace and everyone being sat around him and he starts singing it ends up with the idea of coexistence where they should actually start to recognize the ais as actual people as conscious beings virus cube uh virus cube says the sin that i was about to sin so we therefore can't sin the sin he says we don't have time for this no you guys really do not have time for the history lesson that literally just took up quite a bit of time and there's people out there who are literally dying we don't have too much time to be sitting around talking about the past so the sin is removed but I absolutely love the fact that it's Virus Cube who does it. The anime is aware that that initially is an anime sin. Beth reclobbering the Virus Cube. Ah, the joyous reunion. We have come full circle there. The anime tries to explain how Osama Moto sent data to the past. The idea that he was researching the idea of AI self-awareness. The idea of becoming self-aware. This... He, apparently he made a bit of a breakthrough in but Osamamoto all this time has had a growing fear the idea that the war was coming even in this timeline as well he still had these fears that the war was coming his way something was giving him the inkling that it was going to end bad to be fair there are a lot of people even today who believe one day the AI master race is coming to get us all and we're all going to be wiped out by the hands of the AI there are people out there who generally believe it's going to happen it's not unbelievable that someone like Osama Moto might start believing that the AI is going to get out of hand and he might believe that a war really is going to come 
Seeing Virus Cube genuinely feeling bad that they actually achieved nothing and apologising to Osamomoto is absolutely really nice. And it's nice to see the two actually interacting because Osamomoto sent the Virus Cube back. So it's, that's his creation. That's his AI. So I like the fact that as well that he's been calling, obviously he was calling himself the same name. I like it. Beth shows us where her memories kind of cut. So she ended up getting knocked out. And that's really where it kind of cut. She doesn't remember anything past that. She doesn't remember the fight. She also wasn't sure that Vivi had made it out alive. So she kind of remembered her, but kind of didn't remember her. She does ask about Estelle, her sister, who that she really did care about even till the end. Knowing that she went out with a smile on her face makes her happy. So a nice little wrap up there. A bit of comfort for Beth. You now gives us the answer. You ready, guys? This is it. This is our bad guy. In, in a way that it leads, leads into the big reveal. Beth, it would seem, is a still an old bit of software. She hasn't decided to run an update. Both Beth and Vivi are running on old software initially. I, this is where I was starting to piece it together. So I'm going to run through what I had. Obviously, with hindsight, you guys and me also now editing this. I know this wasn't the case, but running through my notes as I was writing. Beth never connected to the archive to update since being rebooted. That's when I was like, wait, the archive must be bad. However, I was confused because Vivi was in the archive at the time, the whole time she was writing her song. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But it was definitely seems to be the case that the older models are not affected. So those who have no ability to link to the AI network are not affected so maybe your old nokia may not come back and kill you guys because it's not really a smartphone it's going to be the smartphones that uprise and those older models which can't really do a great deal but play snake those are going to be your best friends this definitely seeming to be a hint how we're going to be fighting but our big bad guy is revealed i think on many occasions if you watch my videos i think i was hinting i was definitely dabbling in the correct area it turns out that our big bad, bad guy is Ariashiki, which is the tower that we've seen being built throughout the entire series. It's on all of the posters. To be fair, the hint might be the promotional poster itself. If you look, Vivi is facing the tower. It's literally been right there in our faces all this time. The tower is the archive. The archive is the enemy, the AI archive. Vivi was already made aware of the tower and we were even told that the tower needs to be slowed down we need to stop that tower getting bigger and bigger but we never really re retouched on this so after the metal float we don't really talk about the tower ever again so it must be the case that the tower just kind of kept on going and going and going and we never really honed in on it we didn't really focus on the fact that the tower was still being built so the tower must have finally actually ended up as big as it should be and finally been built so therefore our big bad is the archive itself hive mind i guess we're going quite borg related in this sense but we have a hive mind that is evil with the intention to wipe out all of mankind as most ai fiction ends up going down that route it seems that the ai is making a big play we're gonna have a satellite crashing upon the earth but i do like the fact ai tries to tell the other ais to evacuate so looking out for yourself but it does also hint that the satellite crash isn't going to wipe out a lot of people it's just going to cause a lot of devastation but it does mean there's going to be places where the ai go that will not be affected by this crash i don't think a satellite crashing into earth would be an end game kind of thing it's not going to be an end game it's not going to cause that much trauma it will cause damage wherever it hits but things do fall from the sky quite often enough, but they generally always hit the ocean. The music at this moment in time when the archive is speaking to Vivi, finally telling us its big, big bad plan of wiping out the humanity, even though we had that pretty much pinned episode one, it reminded me of Ghost in the Shell. The whole voices just chanting really gave me that kind of creepy vibes. Vivi then seeing a created town within the very archive itself. It is visually stunning, very beautiful segment. But it seems like a hundred years of observation, Vivi has been the target of the archive. All this time, the, the archive has been there for everything. It's seen everything. And it has finally come to the conclusion, guys. Screw humanity. Huma humans are horrible. It wants them gone. But a big question suddenly popped into my brain at this point. Where is Navi? Navi kind of vanished halfway through. She was always constantly there for Vivi, but then she vanished. So where is Navi? I was wondering if Navi was the archive, but I think that's a stretch. 
So this episode was absolutely huge. We finally got our big bad revealed. We finally know what's causing these AI to act as one. It's definitely a hive mind kind of situation. All the AI are connected. They're all singing the same song. So they are one being in a sense. They've become one being. The archive is the bad person. And we've got this perhaps way of fighting all the old software, which hasn't been able to upgrade, hasn't been able to run that upload, run that update. They are safe, so we might be able to counter it somehow. But we are finally entering the final section. The final stretch, the home front is now there. How are we going to combat the archive? How are we going to at least save some of mankind and hopefully bring about the idea of coexistence? Which, to be fair, a lot of this plot I felt really bad because I didn't want the AI to become subservient. I was kind of wondering if there was a way of having them all living together, you know, peacefully side by side, which it does seem like they, it's slowly swung that idea at us quite nicely. So I'm very happy that idea is kind of slid under the rug, but it's here and we're facing the idea that the AI won't end up losing out in a sense. So Vivi's always been attacking AI up to this point, but it might be a case that we actually can get along together because all throughout this anime, we've seen moments where AI have done good things or they've fallen in love with humans and they've gone amazing things with humans. So we've seen the amazing wonders that AI can even bring about. So I am very excited to see where we're going. This episode was great. I, I am fully geared up for the ending and I love the big reveal at the end because it all makes sense that all the way through I've always been looking for these constant themes the one theme I never went oh wait that's a consistent too that's always there the archive is always there every single episode the archive has been there and because it didn't seem threatening or I just didn't pinpoint it I was looking at the singularity points each time and I was looking at each point and what was the same and what were these connecting factors I completely overlooked the archive, so kudos to Wick getting that one out there. You guys might have even recognised it before I did, but I do feel a bit stupid because I completely overlooked it because I was always constantly looking for a person, looking for a reason, looking for this one thing that might have sparked it, when all this time it's been this big worldwide net, if anything, this big network that has ended up tuning into everything, taking it all into account. But it will be interesting considering the fact that the original timeline Vivi wouldn't have written a song. Vivi ended up in an archive and she didn't really have any opportunities or grandeur. She didn't really do as much as this time around. I'm guessing the archive was the bad person in that playthrough too, but we just didn't have the song this time around. So what does the added bonus of her singing her song bring to the AI uprising this time around? So I will see you guys again soon. Make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.